Um, and we always get the question about, you know, long-term research with gamma knife and cyber knife and radiation in general, um, and what the chances are of, of um, malignancy occurring in the tumor following radiation. Um, but I had a question today that I haven't had. I do want you to answer that question, but then also, um, if the tumor touches the brainstem, is there a chance of necrosis or paralysis on the brainstem? I haven't heard that one before, but I thought that yeah. was interesting. So um, secondary degeneration into a malignant tumor, they try to look at. Um, again, going all the way back to proving things, Electa, the companies tried to pool gamma knife in general to see if their gamma knife um, causes secondary tumors. The data, the best data they can pool isn't the best data, but they don't see any increased incidence of secondary cancers. Having said that, in my residency, I saw a patient who had had an acoustic treated years ago and then came in with something more aggressive. So it probably can happen. It's extraordinarily rare. Yeah. Um, as far as necrosing someone's brainstem, that shouldn't happen because the dose is so conformal that if you're not, if you don't move during the treatment and the treatment, you know, we, we do what's called um, dose tolerance. So we trace out the brainstem, we trace out the cochlea, we trace out optic nerves, you know, and, and then when we prescribe before we actually treat anybody, we run a simulation to say how much radiation is the brain stem gonna see? How much radiation is the optic nerve gonna see? How much radiation is the cochlea gonna see? And, it, and we know historically what the tolerance is of those structures. So we have to keep our doses below the tolerance so as not to cause a problem with those organisms and with those um, anatomical regions. So if the brain stem is well drawn out, and the tumor is right up against the brainstem, we do sometimes have to pull our treatment dose back a little bit, mm -hmm. maybe not get as much in there as we want so that we don't necrose the brainstem. So it, I'm sure it's happened. I'm sure you've got people in your um, association where they've had swelling in their brainstem or necrosis in their brainstem or a bunch of inflammation from gamma knife or cyber knife. I'm sure it's happened. It can happen to anybody everybody's body's a little bit different, but in general, because that dose is, there's such a steep drop off between what we're giving the tumor and what anything next to it should get. Yes, it can happen, but it probably shouldn't. Yeah. Um, and you'd have to review, if there is somebody out there, you'd have to review the dose and the treatment day and figure out, you know, are, do they have an inflammatory problem going on elsewhere? You know, we did know back in so one of the things about radiation when someone's on chemotherapy is that the blood, this thing called the blood brain barrier is a little more sensitive when you're on these certain meds. So we never would give radiation if someone was also on chemo, we can do that with gamma knife, but radiation in general, like there's other meds that can affect it. So I'm sure it's happened, but there's probably an explanation for it outside of just, you know, saying that radiation surgery can cause this. There's probably something else going on. Okay. That kind of leads me into another question that we had from um, a patient um, from before your talk started, but um, they had been given Avastin. Is that, am I saying it right? Avastin? You are. Um, mm -hmm. To control swelling, I believe. Mm -hmm. But I understand that that is, I think it's a chemotherapy drug. Is that correct? Um, correct. And so is that a common practice to deal with swelling um, from this kind of radiation? Yeah. So, so yeah, in gen more often than not, um, the swelling that would require Avastin is in the brain itself. So the cerebrum, the higher up part of the brain. If we treat brain metastases, um, you know, like a lung cancer that goes to the brain or breast mm -hmm. cancer that goes to the brain, Gamma is very good at helping us treat those without surgery too. But oftentimes you can get necrosis or cell death in the brain around it. And you get these, you know, up to a year or two later, you can get some bad inflammation in the brain tissue. Uh, that's where I've used Avastin when some, you can go on steroids for a little while and the what's called radiation necrosis or post-treatment inflammation, same thing. The brain is having a reaction in a very delayed fashion to the radiation that it saw. So the tumor is dead, but now the brain around where the tumor was is starting to get irritated. Avastin um, is, it, it 